Let's play a game. Take a stack of cards and arrange it in any number of piles. Make sure to arrange the piles from largest to smallest. Remove one card from each pile to create a new pile. Make sure the piles are still in order and let's do it again. Take one card from each pile to make a new pile. This time we don't need to reorder the piles. When the same piles occur twice, the game is over. Here we show each turn of this game. Pause the video and take a moment to check each step we've taken, or even try a game yourself. This game is called Bulgarian Solitaire, and it has been widely studied ever since it was introduced to a mathematician on a train in the early 80s. Suppose our deck has 10 cards. If we start with one pile of four and three piles of two, after one turn we have a pile of four, a pile of three, and three piles of one. After another turn, we have a pile of 5, 3, and 2. Our game ends with 4, 3, 2, and 1. Remarkably, when playing with 10 cards, no matter what your initial arrangement is, you will always have piles of 4, 3, 2, and 1 in the end. You don't have to take my word for it. Try it yourself. This works because 10 is a triangular number. In fact, if the number of cards is any triangular number, we will have this result. A useful way to visualize Bulgarian Solitaire is with a diagram called the Cradle Model. Piles of cards are represented as stacks of blocks sitting in a cradle. Take away the bottom block of each stack to create a new stack which we place on the left. We let gravity slide these higher blocks down so that the stacks are always ordered from largest to smallest. Keep doing the same process and after two more turns, we reach 4, 3, 2, and 1. Notice that after this step, nothing changes in our cradle diagram. We will call an empty space in our diagram a hole. Notice that with each turn, a block or a hole will move from left to right in its row. The number of turns it takes to move a block or hole back to its original spot corresponds to the row it's in. This block is in the fourth row, so it takes four turns to return to its original position. If a hole is directly beneath a block, the block will fill the hole by falling down a row. Once a block has fallen into a hole, the block cannot move up to a higher row. After a finite number of steps, if there are any holes in the cradle diagram, they must be in the top row. How do we show this? Consider the following example. Since this block is in the sixth row, it will take six turns to return it to its original position while the hole in the fifth row will take five turns to return to its original position. After six turns, the block is in its original position while the hole has moved one to the right. This means that the distance between the hole and the block is decreasing with each turn. Once the block is directly above the hole, gravity will cause the block to fall, filling the hole. This argument can be used on any diagram. In fact, any hole that is lower than the top row will eventually be filled, so after a few steps, any holes will be in the top row. When the number of blocks is triangular, the game will always end in the triangular position. Why? If there was another arrangement, there would have to be a hole in the top row as well as a lower row which must be filled. When the number of blocks is not triangular, the top row will have holes. The blocks in the top row will cycle until the arrangement is repeated. Another way to represent the game is by looking at the partitions of the number of cards. A partition is a way of writing a number as the sum of other numbers. For example, here are the partitions of the number 8. We can represent each arrangement of 8 cards as one of these partitions. 422 2 represents a pile containing 4 cards and 2 piles each containing 2 cards. After one turn, we will have two piles of three and two piles of one, corresponding to the partition 3311. We can list all the partitions of eight and add arrows that show how each partition changes when playing Bulgarian Solitaire. We see that depending on our initial arrangement, there are two different cycles possible with eight cards. The fact that we have two cycles is more evident from the cradle diagram. 8 is 2 more than a triangular number, so our cradle diagram will eventually have 2 blocks and 2 holes in the top row. 
If the two blocks are next to each other, we will have a four cycle in our diagram of partitions. If the two blocks have a hole between them, we will have a two cycle. Eight is the smallest number of blocks that has two different cycles. Here's a challenge for you. Can you find the smallest number of cards which has exactly three distinct cycles?